For the last 50 years, there have been two types of transport in China. If you were Chairman Mao, you had a honky, red flag armoured limo. If you were not Chairman Mao, you had one of these. Or, if you were really lucky, you had one of these. And even in the early 90s, the idea that you would own a car was complete madness because you'd never have been able to afford it. And even if you could afford it, you weren't allowed to have one. Now, though, things have changed. In 1977, there were one million cars in China. By 2008, there were 51 million. Now, there are 85 million. And every day, that number swells by 38,000. Somebody buys a new car in China every 2.3 seconds. To keep up with demand, China's car factories are running at light speed. Last year, the whole of Europe combined produced 16.9 million vehicles. China, all on its own, produce 1.3 million more than that. And it's not just Chinese companies that are cashing in on the boom. Audi is now making long wheelbase versions of its cars specifically for sale in China and nowhere else. Because in China, space in the back matters more than anything else. China is now the world's second biggest oil consumer, taking more barrels per day than India and Japan combined. By 2025, the road network will be big enough to cover the whole of the British Isles. All of it. Scottish Highlands, the lot. 20 times over. So where did it all begin? Well, one of the first cars ever to be sold in China was this. The CA6410UA. Better known to you and I as the Austin Maestro. Actually, it's the back end of a Maestro, but the front end of a Montego, and it's powered by a Toyota engine. The history behind this car, though, is even more complicated. In 1998, a Chinese tobacco company bought the tooling for the Maestro and the Montego so they could be made in China. Now, in order to make them in China, they had to tell the authorities that they were building buses. This car, or I should say these cars, because this is a bit of a cut-and-shut job. These were terrible when they were being built in Britain. So imagine what they were like when they were being made using worn-out tools by a company that's the Chinese equivalent of Players Number 6. It's just hopeless. Chinese are very good at this sort of thing. I'm speaking to you now from behind a pair of fake Ray-Bans wearing a fake Armani jacket, carrying a fake Louis Vuitton bag in which we find a fake iPad and a fake iPhone. And if we consult my fake Omega, we see that it's 25 to 3, probably, which means it's time to pop into the fake Starbucks over there for a cup of fake coffee. It seems then that the expression copyright infringement doesn't translate terribly well into Mandarin. <laughs> 